Everybody, hope you're well. Sorry, it's been a while since I've done a video. Um, just thought I'd do a quick video, hopefully a bit <laughs> quick video anyway, on these. These are um, yet another PLA replacement. Um, I've got these printed up, these boards from uh, PCBWay, but I'm not sponsored by PCBWay. Um, and what they are, they are a, they're called a neat PLA. So you've got uh, a CPLD on there, a few capacitors and a little 3.6 volt regulator. And they're just a nice, um, tidy kind of uh, approach. What they basically are is a much tidier version than, of this. This is a dodgy PLA, which I did a video on a while ago. And this is one you can etch at home. Oop, drop all over the place. Uh, and you can etch it at home, and it's the same chip. It's got a different regulator on it, but it's more or less the same thing. Um, and these have had a firmware update uh, recently or relatively recently so they are now as good as these so if you've already got these then you don't really need to do this unless you want it to look pretty so what I've done here is I've got five boards from PCBWay and you can see I've labeled one there China and one Farnell and that's because I got two different lots of CPLDs so the first lot of CPLDs arrived like this from China and I've actually built this one with these and it actually works. So here's the packaging for five CPLDs from Farnell, just to give you an idea of the scale. That's my hand and there's five CPLDs in there. So what do you need to build this? Well, obviously you're gonna need your CPLDs. Obviously you're gonna need your boards. I think these are $5 for five and I lost them and ordered another five so I'll probably be building some more. Uh, then you're going to need these little 3.6 volt regulators, they're SOT23. I'll see if I can scooch in a bit there. On the older version, the dodgy PLA, you, you use a normal sort of AMS, is it? The 3.3 volts, these are 3.6 volts. You will also need some round pin headers for the legs. I've still got a few here, but I obviously need to get some more. A few capacitors, and I use one of these sample books. I don't know why they, they, um, they sell them. I don't know if they're supposed to sell them, but they do. And you need two two and a half microfarads 805 and one 220 nanofarad 805. That is the uh, regulator 3.6 low dropout regulator. And that is the um, CPLD. What else will you need? The last thing you're going to need is some way to program it. And I use one of these. This is a knockoff platform cable USB. I think I paid about 20 or 30 quid for it. I think looking on Amazon now, they're about 40 quid. And all of this mess here is just your lines. So the one thing that I don't like so much about these is you've got to solder to the actual pads to program it. Whereas on the dodgy PLA, you have pins. Hence this here. So you've got TCK, TDI, TMS and TDO and five volts and ground. But we'll get onto that in a minute. Okay, and just for completeness, that's the mouse apart number. I can even see that. But it's a 579MCP 5, 5, 3.6, that's the low voltage regulator. Other things you're going to need, obviously you're going to need some solder. I always use uh, 6040 lead solder. I normally get it off Retroleum, but I've got this off of... Um, I think it was a gadget who put me onto that. It's good stuff. Loctite. A little bit of flux, and I'm still using this stuff, although I know it's getting rarer and rarer. I think it's genuine. That's the Rossman flux. A pair of tweezers. And I like to use one of these little, ah, if I can get it, to come over here. These cheap little Chinese things to hold the board still when you're, um, when you're trying to get the CPLD on there, it's going to be all sorts of fun if you can't hold it still. So that just locks in there and you just do that up tight like that and that will help that bit. So the first thing to do, give it a little clean up, give it a little flux and then I'll pop you on the microscope and we'll put the CPLD on. Give it a little clean because I don't know where it's been. Right, and just uh, going to liberally spread a bit of it on the pins where the CPLD is going to go. It's going to be wrong. See the dot here, 
it's got the base of the dot there so let's just spin it round without whacking it and you need magnification to do this I don't think the phone is going to do this sufficient justice so let's get you on the microscope Okay, so that's uh, pretty much back off the microscope now because we can see what we're doing. Just going to clean it up. Just a bit of IPA, nothing magic. Now it just needs some legs. To get this straight, I'm going to use one of these old questionable sockets here that's been I think ripped off or something. Is it? Yeah, maybe. I'll pop it in there like that. Put the legs in like that. Oh my god, what's going on there? Uh -huh. And then we can arrange it like that. And now we know that the legs are straight. Okay, so that's the physical chip made. Um, see it like that like the others we've got to program it now this is where this falls down relative to the dodgy PLA the dodgy PLA is a lot easier to connect things to <coughs> what we've got to do let's scooch it out a bit we've got to get one of these programmers this is one I use anyway we've got to attach to the board we've got to solder to the board one two three, 
four. And then we're going to plug the, that one we don't worry about, because that was for the dodgy PLA. Five volts and ground, or ground and five volts in. And then, even though this is going to be connected to the computer via USB, it's got to have its own five volts and ground, which is why these wires have been exposed like that, so I can just tap in from a bench power supply and external five volts. So this is a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest, this bit. Let's just see how it goes. I forgot to mention the last thing you got to do is power and ground so uh, without damaging this very delicate thing powers top right ground is bottom left so you can see them there and then I've got a jack 5 volts in here and ground in here and connect it to the USB okay right, so apologies for the camera angle here if it all looks a bit how you going that's because it totally is um, we've got 5 volts coming from the power supply which has been jacked into the 5 volts and ground pins on the chip and then we've got the wires are soldered on going to the platform cable USB which goes into this uh, my older computer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Impact which is under Xilinx Design Tools you'll have to download all of this, links in the description uh, Xilinx Design Tools and you want impact so wherever it is I impact and do I want to load the last one? yes you see it's neatpla.jed and just so you know get that jed file from the github page and it's I think it's in here so you've got the old the, the one for the dodgy PLA to update that and you've got neatpla.jed, which is this one here. So you click on that, we right click it, hit program. Okay, so we've got a test set up here. This is the test bench uh, C64, and it's all socketed, it's got a zip socket. So these are the chips. I'll put the chip that we've just made. inside you can see it there that's the chip and it's unplugged at the moment so we're going to first of all we're going to use super zaxon this is a especially fussy version i think the hc versions of the chips rather than something else so it should show it up if it's going to be bad plug it in colson power supply and i'm going to tilt you up to the telly I'm not very good at this, by the way. But I'm not seeing massive amounts of distortion anywhere. The the kind of lens, the kind of uh, curves you can see on the screen there, I think that's to do with the screen polarization. I can't actually see that when I'm playing. I can only see it through the camera. Oh, got away with that. Try again. Okay, so that's that test. That appears to be fine. So the next test is going to be this glitch test that I made. I did this in another video, it's not my idea. And we're going to run a memory test off of here, so it's unplugged at the moment. Uh, I remember how this works, it's got the top bit on there, so I don't completely bollocks it up so, so that's going to run the memory program and this is going to be our glitch tester and what happens is if if the red light lights up more than one time so the first time it might but then you reset it if it lights up again then the PLA is glitchy so let's, I'm recording on it let's plug it in turn it on 
No, it's not the first time, so we reset it. Like that. Load. And test. PRG, comma A. Run. All right, so it's doing this. It's going to do different um, memory tests. But the key is that when it's finished, that light should not come back on on the cartridge. So it's finished its test. Let's just go down to the cartridge. It's a bit of a how you go and set up here, but you can see that the light hasn't come on. And in case you think I'm cheating, I'll do it again. So run. Going again, and bring it down, and you can see the light hasn't come on yet. <gasps> the excitement. It's this light we're looking for here. In fact, it comes on again, it's a glitchy PLA. It's completed the test, and it hasn't come on. So I think we call that PLA good. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. That's the neat PLA. It's not a lot different to the dodgy PLA. I actually quite like the dodgy PLA because I like the look of it, but uh, that's it there. You go back along with the other three or two I've made. And we'll put the original PLA back in. This, this long suffering test machine. So I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Bye.